Hi and welcome to the Windows System Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I will be your guide in this course. So what are we going to cover in this course? We'll start with a basic overview to see what are the prerequisites and the goals of this course and then we'll start going through the actual topics. We'll start with the foundations of Windows to look at some of the basic concepts in Windows such as processes, threads and virtual memory. Then we'll start developing simple applications in module 2 using the Windows APIs. And then we'll take a deeper look at objects and handles how to use them in a typical Windows application. Here's a slide about me, some of the stuff that I've been doing. I've written a few books, you can go ahead and uh, click those various links or just do a web search. So let's start with the introduction. What are we going to do anyway? So the course is about the fundamentals of writing applications in Windows using the Windows APIs. It's not about writing graphical applications, but more about writing things which is close to the platform, like working with processes and threads and memory and handles and so on. So we're going to use the documented Windows API to write applications. And of course we can use that in various ways, but this course is the foundational course of how to get started using this vast API. And in between we'll gain a better understanding of various Windows mechanisms. And I think one of the best ways to learn about Windows is by writing programs, writing code. And so using the Windows API we can learn about how things behave and you can of course look at, at, that, at what happens using tools or a debugger. And so you as the viewer, I expect you to be either a developer or a researcher or really anyone that wants to get a deeper understanding of Windows. One of the best ways to learn, in my opinion, is to write code, and this is what we're trying to do in this course. However, there are some prerequisites which are needed for this course. The only one that is really mandatory is the good familiarity with the C language. There's really no way around it. If you don't know how to program in C, please look at some tutorials, do some basic coding. There's really no way to handle C and the Windows API in, in one go. And so this is sort of mandatory. And then if you have some acquaintance with OS concepts, whether that's in Windows or some other operating system, then that's all the better. We will look at the most important concept, but if you have some exposure to that already, that's even better. And you should have a basic familiarity with Visual Studio and I will show you how to get started with Visual Studio, but if you already know something about this tool, then again, that's great. It will make your life a little bit easier at the beginning. So what is system programming anyway? System programming has several definitions depending on where you look at. However, the kind of common criteria is programming at the lower level of abstraction in Usable. And so you can use any language for that technically, but we're going to use C and a little bit of C++. And the reason is that these are the most or the least abstracted languages compared to the Windows API itself, which is of course also made up, made up of mostly C functions. And so technically you can use higher level languages such as C Sharp or Java or Python or or whatever you want, but you don't gain any special advantage here. In fact, you only have some disadvantages that keep you a bit uh, further away from the platform. And so system programming is about using the native facilities of the platform as best that we can. So we don't really want to be cross-platform or platform agnostic. On the contrary, we want to be very specific so we can leverage what the platform allows us to have. And so typically such applications, such code is written in low level languages that are close to the metal and have no runtime overhead. So C, C++ and Rust are, are good choices for these kinds of programming. We're going to use some tools, mostly built-in tools, 
in Windows uh, and in this course I think we're just going to use the task manager and there's a bunch of other tools which are very useful that are part of a bundle called the sysinternals tools you can see the link here that points to in fact it's redirected into a Microsoft uh, website Microsoft TechNet sysinternals where you can download a zip file that contains all these tools and then the only thing you have to do is just uh, expand them uh, to whatever folder you want and they're good to go and perhaps I'll show some other tools uh, as we go along now if you look at something like system programming it's a vast topic really you can have many many courses on the topic and still not cover it properly so there's always the need to look elsewhere perhaps to get more information so here are some resources I recommend you use if you want to get more information. The first one is in terms of books is the Windows Internals book or books, a series of books. This is sort of a general introduction, and overview and a look in the internals of Windows. It's a very good book for many purposes. Using the book for system programming in, is not directly helpful because the Windows Internals book is not a programming book, but it does provide all the necessary information uh, in the background about processor threads. It's fairly deep, so um, it's not necessarily an easy read. I have written uh, two books related specifically to system programming. One of them is already out at the time of this recording, and the other one is still a work in progress. So you can use these books as well to supplement the materials that we're going to go over in this course and future courses. There is an older book, but it's still useful, called Windows System Programming by Johnson M. Hart, uh, that you can also use. Uh, it only has coverage for Windows 7 and nothing beyond that, but still many of the topics there are still relevant in today's systems. And of course, we're going to use the MSDN documentation, so the official Microsoft documentation. This is always needed. There's no way to remember every API. There's no way to remember the meaning of every parameter. We have to go to documentation, have it open by your side at all times, really, when you're doing active development. And of course, there are various blogs and websites that allow you to get even more information. So with that, we can go ahead and move into the first module in the next video.